Riff listeners, welcome back. We're continuing with our Leadership 101 podcast. I hope these have been helpful for you. If they have been helpful, let us know by dropping a question on the Riff, northpointchurch.tv slash podcast. Submit a question for us to dive into. We're continuing with another episode today, and Justin sits down with Jeremy, and Jeremy's going to share his leadership experience, things he's been through, things he's learned along the way. Let's give it a listen. Welcome to another episode of The Riff. We're excited that you're uh, joining us today. And so uh, we're uh, gonna continue. Uh, we're, we've been talking about leadership because we're in the series of leadership. Uh, talking about how do we serve uh, our community in whatever roles of influence we have, whether we're leading at the home, in the office, you know, school, whatever it might be. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna continue talking about it. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm so, excited for today. I am, I am too. So today, I actually get to ask. By the way, you what? look cold. But you, look I cold. am in a jacket. I've got a hoodie on. Yeah. I wish I had gloves, but I don't. I am a little chilly. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's cold out there. It's cold out there. Yeah, at Unless, least we're recording this. Right. So. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's 75 when you're listening to this. Yeah, but it's pretty chilly right but now. But we prepare in advance. 100. So, so if you're like, it doesn't match. The Would calendar. you rather be cold or hot? Oh, I'd rather be hot all day long. Same. Yeah. Why is that? Um, because we both agree, so that's yeah, why it's I like that. <laughs> or, or why would I rather be hot? Yeah, what you're saying. Oh, um, because I don't like being cold. So, really? Yeah. I, if I'm hot, I'm not whining. I'm not one of those guys whining. Uh-huh. Like if I had it around here, people argue, you know, and whine. If I had a nickel for everybody who whines about how hot it is, I could afford AC. I mean, it's just one of those deals. I'm like, I don't whine. I'm into it. I'm into. Right. I'm into the great summer weather. Great, man. Yeah, that's a little insight to Jeremy. I yeah. like that. All right, so today I actually get to ask you some questions okay. on leadership. So we've been walking through uh, with leadership mm-hmm. uh, a couple of great people that have been on the podcast, um, and you've been able to kind of walk through just yeah. leadership theories and leadership ideas and. How do they lead this? How do they lead that? Loved, loved hearing uh, both Rick and Scott's story. Awesome. If you if you missed it, d- definitely go back and listen to those. Um, uh, uh, two very practical ways of mm-hmm. taking a business and doing really good in it. Um, so you can just get some great leadership there, but also how do you position it to be a blessing? So yeah, yeah that was cool. Great episode. So today I get to ask you a couple questions on leadership. All right. All right. So uh, we'll ask some questions on leading staff, um, leading people in general. Um, you've led North Point for a while now. Yeah. And I uh, just kind of want to go through some of those stories and lessons that you might have in your brain. So that's today. All right. I do have one thing I want to hit though. Okay, hit We've it. We've lost our viewership and our listenership in Belgium. Are you kidding me? I'm not joking you. So first off, I want to say I'm sorry to anybody that's living in Belgium. I don't know what we've done, Uh, Yeah, but I'm sorry. I felt like it's not because we didn't give them No, uh, we have given, we have shout outs like crazy, but here's the deal. We've seen a spike. You ready? Yeah. In Japan. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise? (laughs) No, not at all. (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) Um, I feel like uh, I feel like that's gonna spread. Uh huh. Yeah. So. so, and by spike, I mean six people. So that's I know, I know, and I don't know how many people are in Japan. I've never been there. That's like I don't know the exact. But I think that's like ten percent of the country. I'm not great at math, but I think you're right. Yeah. So yeah. So pretty excited. So All Japan right. Tell listeners, your um, hello and thank you. I don't know any Japanese, no. but I gotta learn. Yeah, right now, we will. I guess we will so. learn. We'll have, All right. we'll have subtitles. So. <laughs> All right, so theory of leadership for Jeremy Johnson. Yes. Um, I want you to define it. Define leadership. I know there's a, there's a term out there, servant leadership. I've heard you say there's no such thing as servant leadership. There's just leadership. Right. That's how you lead is you serve. Um, so just kind of walk through. What, what, how do you define leadership um, as you lead North Point? Um, what is it that you're looking for in your brain when you think leadership overall? Yeah, I think... Um, in any capacity, leadership is the ability to um, engage engage somebody um, with a message and uh, be able to lead them in the execution of of progress towards this desired goal. So, whether you're coaching a team, is to be able to say, okay. Um, here's what we're trying to accomplish and be able to communicate that. So engaging that message in a way that that makes sense, people can feel it, but then also giving them very clear execution so that they can take some steps, Um, whether it's parenting, 
um, whether it is in a business setting, is bottom line communicating in a way that people understand. So engaging them in a message, giving them very clear steps that they can execute so they can walk towards that desired goal that you've, you've explained. And so I think that's what leadership is. Um, leadership in a church setting um, is to continually grab a hold of the vision and the mission of the church to continually clarify it and bring context to it all the time to this wide range of people who are part of the congregation and to be able to have clear uh, next steps that ones can execute so that we can become uh, closer to this desired goal. Mm -hmm. So at North Point, we're gonna always be about this mission. And if people don't understand um, what our mission is, if if they're confused as uh, why we exist, that we're to be a safe place for people to find and follow Jesus, then we're not we're not engaging with the message. And so we got to continue to do that, but then we have to have next steps. We talk about next steps all the time. So those are kind of some of the reasons why we do what we do at North Point, because I believe ultimately that's what leadership is. We have a very inspiring goal, and that's to be an impact on our community to reflect the love of Jesus. But to do that, we need clear message, clear next steps. Great. Uh- I think that leadership can be taken in a lot of different forms um, and get the same quote unquote result, Mm -hmm. right? So I think there's a lot of ways to reach the same goal. One of the things that you've done just from what I've seen, um, (laughs) the way you lead is super open-handed. Okay. What does that mean to you? It means that (laughs) I don't think that you've ever manipulated staff. Um, It doesn't at least feel like it. (laughs) And there's times where your questions, it, it plays mind games with me, at least at times it did in the early days. Because okay. one of the things that you would always say would be, you hold the position very loosely. Right. And you grip the vision tightly. Okay. Right? Yeah. So so there's that like dichotomy that you walk through, which I've always been just very intrigued by your leadership style. Because there's something about you that's like, oh, this guy's driven. He's got a goal. He's got a purpose, but he also has open hands, and it's okay if you lose this or lose that. So, how did you get? And you might not even be at that spot. I don't know, but that's kind of just the way I've I've read it. Right. Um, you'll say things all the time. I mean, like, yeah, I'm not going to work here forever, right? Right. Um, but while I'm here, I'm here, <laughs> right. right? Like, we're right. we're going to get this mission accomplished. Um, but there's like an easiness to your leadership. There's not an easiness, a, a breath of fresh air, a relaxation while there's still um, a drive to perform and to succeed, right. Right? right? So how do you play with those two pieces? Because I've, I've been in other settings and other situations to where there's that drive to succeed, but there's also not that <sighs> moment. It's always like this almost pressure feel to where it's like, I think we were going for the same goals, right? It's just the way that you do it is different. Right. So explain, how, how did you yeah. get there? Are you there? Am I reading that correctly? Um, but kind of explain that open-handed piece. And you've you've talked a lot about closed right. fist and open-handed leadership. So yeah. walk into that a little yep. bit. Let, let me walk through that and then we can go to mm-hmm. how we got there. Yeah. But um, you know, what that means to me is, um, is, is I am not, I wanna start with this idea. As a leader, um, I'm not entitled to be the leader. Mm-hmm. Um, it is an honor and an opportunity to lead in any capacity, whether I'm leading an area of ministry at a church, whether I'm leading um, a, a team in, a, in an organization, uh, in the community, whatever it might be. But my role at North Point, it's an opportunity. Um, I didn't earn it. Uh, it's not like if you looked at my resume, people would be like, he must be the lead pastor here. You know, he um, it is, I feel like I had been prepared. I feel like what I had done um, set me up for the opportunity, but it, but this opportunity is over my head, um, which uh, I, it's good for the leader to be aware of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and and, uh, and, and just that, to go through like your background right. was in theater, right? Yeah, I'm, I believe that you were. Yeah. you. I mean, we talk a lot about my show yeah. choir days. Yeah, yeah, but. Were you I, not an improv troupe? Is that correct? I was huh. an improv troupe, and it doesn't surprise it me troop? that you know Is that. that we e? never used that word. Really? Um, we were more of an ambassador for <laughs> a university. 
you know, um, I would say there were there have been dozens of students in the Pacific Northwest who chose to go to Northwest University because uh-huh. of how God used my ability to pantomime. So. Um, uh, keep going. And keep they're going, probably listening. Keep going, keep and they're going. missionaries to Japan, which does not surprise me. Um, so, so for me, here's, here's what I understand is while I'm confident in who I am and I'm confident in how God has prepared me, I'm not entitled. So when I had the opportunity to come serve in the capacity of North Point, um, it's open-handed leadership. I determined from the er, early on, I'm not gonna be insecure about my role. If someone doesn't think that I fit the role, I'm like, that's fine. Like, I'm not trying to prove you otherwise. I'm just excited about the ultimate vision. I'm excited about the opportunity. And now my ultimate focus is communicate a message. Here's our mission. Here are our next steps. And let's engage the people around us to move towards this desired goal. And if it's not about me, because if it's about, I need to prove that I belong or I must be the leader, then I'm going to make decisions based on that. My decisions of staffing will be, will this person be better than me? Will people think they're better than me? Do I want this person speaking? What if everybody likes them? Right? Mm-hmm. Those kind of things. And I'll make decisions that are self-preservation decisions um, that aren't good for the organization. And if I can determine early on, the goal is not for me to hang on to this job. Now I'm positioned open hand to grip the mission. So tight hands around the mission and the vision and make every decision mission centric. And so ultimately, here's what it means, is if is if this year, it makes a lot more sense for our mission for someone else to be the lead of North Point, and there will be a day where that's the truth. There will be a day. My hope is that um, I don't, I don't usher in that day too quick because of lack of competence or preparation. And so I try and make sure that um, I do everything possible Like I can't create the wave. I can't create a wave. I can ride a wave. God gave a wave. The wave is the opportunity. My job is not to try and generate and manufacture opportunities. My job is just to leverage the opportunity that God brings along. Now, I want to ride that wave as long as as, as, uh, I can, Um, but the moment there's a a decision that's, that's best for the organization, I have to be willing to take that and then even even if it impacts my role. Mm-hmm. And, and then what I can feel about this is say, it wasn't about my role. Um, honestly, though, I think that helps you be better at your role. And, and so what I try to do is model that for our entire team because I believe that about all of our team. Like let's say we have 40, 50 people between our campuses, Central and, and Dream Center. Um, the truth is if we have open hands and we all go into every meeting thinking, what does this organization need right now? And we're not holding on to agenda, title, role, position, personality. And we tend to, we tend to, we all tend to. So what I want to do is make it a normal conversation for all of us to understand we all have egos, Mm -hmm. but to be very intentional about laying them down, open-handed roles, and saying, okay, what does this mission need? Now, you're probably prepared to play whatever role is helpful for the mission, and let's do it. So we might not work together for um, for 20 years, but we're working together today, so let's make some hay. Let's let's get it done. Let's, let's move the needle. So that's what I believe, open-handed leadership, but grasping the vision tightly. It's what allowed me to come here. It's what one day is gonna be best. And when that day comes, let's say, let's say um, just, just for fun, 10 years from now is the day that it's best for the organization to have a different voice for this community that can reach the unchurched in this community and, and, and bring us forward. Whatever that day is, um, I have confidence to know that maybe that won't be my role that day. But also, I'll be uniquely positioned for another assignment from God. And I'm fine with that. So that, that's, and I think when we do that, everything's on the table. The only thing that we hold on tightly is the mission of the organization. I, I, I think, I think that's one of the main reasons I stick around. Really? I do. I, I think that there's an ethos and I've been looking to use that word all day. Oh. Uh, and I finally did it and I feel good about it. And honestly, I'm going to use it four more times will... before sunset. <laughs> before sunset? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to be my new detailed. ethos. Three more times. <laughs> there, that permeates, I think, just the organization. Okay. Um, 
I mean, I think of so many interviews that we've been in and, and just discussions that we've had, whether it be you and I, whether it be other teams. Um, and there is that like, it's just, it allows, I think, us to dream. Yeah. And I think it allows us to say, yeah, open your hands. We're not going to hold on to this. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, right, like the earth is going to swallow us all, right? Yeah. And there's a belief, at least for me, that there's a resurrection, right? Uh, so as as well as I. Oh, great, I great. So there's there there is an ultimate hope, right? But right. at the end of the day, like, right, like let's go for it because yeah. whatever we build is going to be lost, right? right? But there's a resurrection. So so I think that there's that ethos. Yes, <laughs> that sounds good. That that just I hope I'm using that right. It doesn't even be matter. Embarrassing if it I'm doesn't not. even matter. It sounds beautiful. <laughs> but I think that that just goes through the organization. And I also yep. think that um, I think that it's interesting because I think that as we talk to people that do come on staff or anything that you're leading, I think there is that moment of like, wait, is this for real? Like, no, it, no, really. Like, open your hands, open right. your hands. So tell me, tell me about, um, tell me a story. Tell me a story. Um, what's the hardest leadership lesson or leadership moment that you've had to walk through, whether it be at North Point, mm -hmm. um, whether it be within a marriage, whether it be within parenting, whether it be uh, with, a, with a previous job? What, tell me just a, a difficult moment and, and how, did you, how did you walk through that? I mean, the safer ones would be to go in my distant past and, <laughs> and talk about that. I mean, I, I, there's... Um, uh, leading at North Point has been the hardest challenge of my life. Mm. Um, it's also very rewarding. So I don't say that in any way of like, I mean, in, and, I, and I, hope, I hope the next season of my life is gonna be the most challenging. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm still in a season of my life where I'm, I love challenge and I'm positioned, I feel like with energy and perspective to, um, I, I wanna have real tough challenge. Now, maybe in 10, 15 years, that's not gonna be my top three desires, but um, it's been the most challenging. And, and part of that is um, I, I cannot lead from affirmation. If I need affirmation, if I'm, if I'm affirmation starved, then that is what will become my ultimate compass. How did you get there? Did you lead from affirmation before? Oh, I'm, I'm naturally presuppositioned to do anything possible to make you like me. I really am. Um, and I think a lot of us are. I think my personality is wired even more like that. I think my insecurities are wired that way. So I have to be very intentional about it. Um, so, so for me, I do not evaluate, and it's tough in it's tough in this business, but this isn't unique. And, and I say business meaning um, our business in front of us, um, our, our mission in front of us, um, is is you know you, you're talking about okay, does this decision do people right away like this decision? Mm -hmm. And and that would feel good. Like if if I said, okay, we're we're making this decision, we're making this shift, we're buying this building, we're launching this campus, we're um, we're we're shifting this staff member, we're whatever it might be, the myriad of decisions. My my natural tendency is I want the church to be like applauding and be like, brilliant decision, didn't see that coming, but as soon as you <laughs> laid it out, I was overwhelmed with how much approval I felt for that decision. <laughs> and rarely does that happen. And so as a matter of fact, sometimes, uh, so the most, the most difficult decisions, um, the most difficult leadership challenges for me are when I really believe something's the right thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's shifting uh, something with, within our ministries or personnel, and um, and people do not agree, and then they they feel like, man, I, I feel like you're hurting our mission. And so for me, I'm thinking, okay, well, let's think through <laughs> the the mission. The mission isn't tied around personnel. The mission isn't even tied around programming. And so. Um, but but those are those are a big deal to me. Or I also understand it's not a board game. If this were a board game, it'd be a lot easier. And I tell myself often, I probably talk to you about this a lot because we work very closely together, is you have to make decisions as if it's a board game. But then you have to enact those decisions, understanding that these aren't board pieces, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They're real human beings. And so sometimes it's crystal clear what the best decision is, but 
it's very personal because someone loved this program and now we're asking them to shift it or someone loved this role and we're asking them to shift it or, you know, and so, so the hardest part of leadership is when you know what the right thing to do is and, um, and, and somebody else's narrative, you know, isn't helpful for them and is painful for them. And I'm associated with that pain. And mm. here's what's even harder when I do it wrong <laughs> and I've done that. I've handled transition sloppy. I've handled communication sloppy where not only did I, maybe, maybe it was the wrong decision, but, but, but the way I communicated made it more harmful or the way I didn't communicate it made it more harmful mm -hmm. because I was trying to win in the conversation. And so I wasn't as clear as I needed to be because I knew that that wouldn't bring the affirmation I needed. So by far the hardest challenge is the stakes are high at North Point. I believe in the vision. I believe in the mission. It requires us every single day to come into come into our work and make tough decisions with open hands and understand, okay, how I communicate and, and, and how, how that impacts people, um, that, that's a challenge. And, and it's also tough um, when something you really believe in doesn't work. I would say this, for example, is um, we, we launched the Joplin campus. Um, and uh, for me, that was, that was one of the most challenging uh, times in leadership for me. And, and I look at that and I believe with everything in me that we should have launched that campus. Absolutely believe it. I felt in my gut of guts, we had prayed about it. We had good counsel on it. Now there were some execution pieces that I did not do well. I did not set up our team for success. I did not set up future campus for success. For success, um, uh, there were things that I did didn't do well that I think made it more difficult. Um, and when it ultimately we had to shut the campus down, which bottom line we probably dragged it out a longer than most consultants would encourage us to. Why? Because it was a dream. I believe from God. And it was very personal to me. Now, at the same time, I'm willing, open-handed to let it go, but I'm like, I don't understand it. And, and, and to this day, here's what I would, I would not have done that differently uh, as far as launching because the result, it, the result does not affirm what, 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 what uh, the, the calling is. Obedience is my goal. Results are, are, are a result. Results are a lag measure and I don't control those. Now, I also think there's a lot of learnings. Uh, I could have led this differently, led this differently, um, involved more of our team in this way, listened to a few more voices that we, uh, for some reason, weren't having into the room and we could have maybe had a lot better results. And so I wanna be a student of learning, but that was a tough one. It's like something I believed in, something that you wanna succeed, it doesn't. And then when it's church and you tie it into spiritual, it feels a lot more painful. And you feel like not only did you make a bad decision, you missed God's voice, right? And you're like, what? <laughs> the only reason we did it. And, and so to have good people that I love and trust feel like, man, you really missed that one. Um, the affirmation part, I can get over that, but it's one of those like, man, I really didn't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is I want to be positioned next time God whispers that to go and to be able to communicate that message clearly <laughs> and to be able to take those clear next steps. So uh, personnel, uh, program changes, uh, lack of success in something we're confident in, those have been the toughest challenges. And, 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 and I'll tell you what, I, I, uh, how I handled um, some of those tensions uh, inside of me, um, I was owning them too much. I was owning the success of Joplin or the lack of success in Joplin and mm. that wasn't healthy for me. And so I've had to learn and remind myself, listen, open hand, I can't control that. I am responsible for obedience. I'm responsible for investing and, and pro, pro, uh, providing a healthy environment for people. When I do that well, we'll probably attract more wins than losses. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, let's go to, if it's not something like that to where it's a, a win or a loss to you, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of a, a strategy that you've got in your mind of, of being open-handed. If you could go back to when it's personnel, yeah, right? When you know the right move to make, but you also know that there's a human involved. right? This could be in parenting, 
where you know the right move to make, yeah. but you know that your kiddo's involved, right? This could be in marriage. This, this could be in anything, right? Right. What are those pieces that you go into those now with? What are your thought process to that? Because I think that you could either be paralyzed by thinking this is going to hurt somebody, yeah. um, or I think you could be a jerk and be like, "This is what's got to happen," right? right? So, like, how do you how do you find that that middle road of it's it's going to be helpful for you, and this is what needs to happen? How do you how do you deal with that tension? I mean, that's it. Is is you have to live in that tension? Mm-hmm. Is um, Ultimately, I'm not in control of your narrative. You know, if I'm, if I have to, I have to remind myself. I'm going to release the control, so I'm not going to get mad if you have a different narrative. I'm not going to get mad if you have different ways that you have to cope so that you can sleep better at night. <laughs> like, or you just see it from a different perspective. And I also realize I might be wrong. Okay, but this is what I believe. Mm-hmm. This is what I believe is going to be best for the organization, and so. You got to be as kind as possible, reflecting of the love of Jesus as possible. But here's what I ultimately believe: if if it's a personnel decision and and there needs to be a shift, that means God's already prepared another opportunity. It's the most kind thing to do for the person. The challenge is when you're the first one to introduce that idea to their mind, <laughs> right? And, and and that happens. And people have done it to me. I've been surprised at someone else's desire for me to transition before in a different role. And I've been like surprised. But what I want to be is be like, okay, okay, wasn't expecting that. I do trust that God's got something. And there's been times where I think, I think you're wrong. Like, I think you're wrong on this. At the same time, it's all right. It's open-handed. So like, let's say let's say the board of North Point comes in tomorrow and says, Jeremy, we can't stay in your podcast. You're done today, right? They would never. Uh, you, there's been a few podcasts, <laughs> right? Yeah, they did. What, what I would do is, even if I didn't feel it in my gut, they're my leadership. Yeah. I would say, okay, curious. <laughs> um, let's dive into some of this learning. But end of the day, even if I'm surprised, even if I don't agree, how I even transition needs to be what's best for the mission. Okay, then I would say, okay, let's figure this out. But bottom line is, what's best for North Point, right? And that, that's true for me, it's true for everybody. So as a, as a parent, if I need to be liked by my kid, then they're gonna one day not like themselves. I've got to be able to say, hey, this is what's going on. How does that make you feel? I'm sorry that makes you feel that way. I don't want to comp- compound that feeling. That's not what I mean by this. You know, I want to divide role and identity, or I want to divide um, learnings uh, from who you are. And so, but I've got to love the person enough and believe in the mission enough. And, and parenting, my mission is for them to be fully sustainable, independent, who can, knows how to pick out a good retirement center for me. That's what I need out of parenting. <laughs> so anything that gets in that way, I have to be willing to confront and do it in a, in a nice way. Um, and I could, I could, I could be a bully. I could be um, or manipulative, um, you know. And, and you can do those things, and you can win today, but but, but you end up losing. And where I learned some of this, I had some such great leaders. Um, and I, honestly, I worked for, I, I worked for four different people before uh, in in my journey that led me to North Point. And I learned great lessons from each of them. I learned from my first pastor, Jim Bennett. Um, he believed in me when I didn't believe in me. When I was just learning, I was making so many mistakes, but he believed in me, he connected with me so well. He, he treated staff like family. Um, I worked for a guy named Daryl Johnson who just, um, he was able to communicate in a way that was just life-giving and navigate conflict so well. And, and, and he had this, this ability uh, to, uh, to, to lead and, and make leadership attractive. I worked, for, I worked uh, for, for other people, Rick Ross, Troy Jones in, in, in the Seattle area. They were leadership gurus, right? And they were very good at being able to turn off the emotion and, and, and do that. But I was able to hang on to some of these emotions. I worked for Ryan Meeks in Seattle who is absolutely open-handed. And, 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 <laughs> and, and that's one of the best things I'll learn from him is, you guys, today, let's be on a missions trip, that mentality. Let's, let's take a, a league of superheroes and let's work hard today. So these people I've learned from, I've, I've picked different attributes that I believe really spoke to me and I've tried to embody them and reflect them. If somebody's listening right now and they think that they are right now in a situation to where they have poor leadership, 
yeah. that they're le- they're following somebody that is right. not healthy. Yeah. Um, what's your advice to that? Is your advice to stay in that situation and glean anything or learn what not to do or yeah. just to get out of that situation? Yeah. What What do you feel on those pieces? I'm not adverse to poor leadership, right? <laughs> so I'm not. Uh, so so my, I think I can learn a lot from a bad leader. Mm. I can learn a lot from a bad leader. Uh, I have. And, and um, now there comes a time when your personal mission, this might not be helping you, but for me, like, like it might be a great grad school in leadership of dysfunction that you're gonna be a way better leader. So as long as it's helping you get where you think God's calling you to go, or as long as you can contribute in a way to make it a healthier place, awesome. Now, there might come a point where this no longer serves God's purpose for your life, go. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't be quick to leave because of the leader. I'd be quick to leave because of the life direction, right? So, mm. and when you see in scripture, <laughs> like a lot of people God used had funky leadership in front of them. And so, but but they learned the lessons. I also, okay, thanks for saying that. Because every time I read like a lot of Old Testament yeah. and then we like talk about it in like leadership series, yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if they were a good leader. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Right, I don't like David. It's a pretty, pretty big mistakes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a couple. And out of dis- dysfunction is just part of humans getting together, yeah. right? Um, and so, so I'm never, I'm, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to encourage anyone to be over dramatic about the flaws of the leadership mm-hmm. environment you're in. Okay, be more aware of the flaws that you bring to the table, and and work on those. Um, and 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 uh, eventually you're guilty by association if it's if it's moving your own personal compass. But uh, man, enjoy the ride, buckle up, take a lot of notes because when you're an opportunity, Leanne and I have kept notes over the years uh, when we are on someone else's team of what can we do, what would we want to do differently, what does it feel on this side of that table, what would we do differently? And so we didn't have resentment and bitterness because now I can't use someone else's flaws to be an excuse for me being a poor teammate because now I'm toxic. I don't care if they're a good leader. God didn't call God didn't call you to work for the best leader. God called you to be the best impact wherever you are. Now, if you have a chance to work for a good one, cool, okay? If you have a chance right now where you're working for a bad one, at least get get there quickly, whatever you're supposed to get to so that you can learn the lessons and move on. That's great. Uh, to finish this up, give me, yep. give me a couple of different resources that you are either currently walking through or that mm-hmm. you've walked through in your past that were just like, man, those are monumental pieces, whether it be a book, whether it be a podcast, a video. Um, what what right now are you going through? What have you gone through in the past that's helpful? Uh, I mean, uh, right right now, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on culture, 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 right? Um, so, uh, and, and part of this is we even had a podcast um, a couple of months ago with Jen Davis and, mm-hmm. and talking to Jen about culture. She's like culture guru. And, and so reading like Culture Code, reading Atomic Habits, reading The Road Less Stupid, um, those, are, those are my most recent books. So my favorite books are typically the ones that I've read the most recent um, because I believe culture is any allowed behavior, right? And there are some things that we can provide as a leader to my team to allow them to feel safe and healthy so that I don't naturally make them more defensive because there are some things if I don't provide will attract toxic behavior. And it doesn't mean they're a toxic person. It means I'm not providing the kind of things that that make toxic behavior unnecessary, right? So, um, so, so those are the things I'm leaning into right now. But, but I'm a big fan of going to a conference every year. It probably doesn't even matter what kind of conference, and just learning and taking notes. And you can do that online. I've read every John Maxwell book ever. Um, I, I, I love it. I'm old enough to, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, it's popular anymore. I just love anything John Maxwell, and he's got like 58 books, and I think it's like three books written like you know 30 <laughs> times each, and. Every Every time I read him, it's gold. Um, you know, I, I I just love uh, love that kind of stuff. And and really, you introduced me to a ton of uh, leadership stuff. It's funny as we talk about like I'm one. If I read a book, I have to take notes. I type it up and I, I file it. And you give me probably more leadership quotes, thoughts, suggestions than anybody I know. And it's all lock up here. You've like it's rare that I've read a leadership book you haven't read <laughs> first um, and know something about. So. Um, uh, There's a thing called Cliff's Notes, and it's great. So I just, it's really, it's a super helpful deal, I, especially in our conversations. <laughs> I just, I go home feeling like I just won the game. Just reading it. That's awesome. Well, it's the ethos I'm trying to create. Oh, I did it again. Man. 
Yeah, I've had. How many times is that? I don't know, but I've had the seven, three. I've had, Jaws? I've had 17 ethos in my life. Wow. And, um, <laughs> so I've got two more to say. All right, well, today. first off, thanks for the conversation. Was, thanks for leading the way you do. Yeah. And, uh, and I know. That, that I've been impacted. I know a lot of other people have been impacted. My family's been impacted by you and Leanne's leadership. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing it with North Point. Um, and I'm going to look up Ethos right now yeah. and uh, find out if I, I'm nervous. I'm right. so nervous if I used it correctly. I, I feel really good about oh. it. Um, you know, and, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping all of, uh, all those who are tuning in today, whether you're leading at home, uh, one, you are, you are uh, someone of influence and God has a desired goal uh, for you to help people move towards. And so do it in a way, open hand with your role, grab that mission tightly, and let's see what kind of impact we can make here in this community. Awesome, thanks. All right. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Riff. Submit a question for the podcast at northpointchurch.tv slash podcast. We'll have a brand new episode every week wherever you find podcasts.